So we finished chapter four of Leah Keshet's book, and we're going to start with chapter five, which is about uh, understanding qualitative solutions of dynamical systems. In other words, we don't try to study the actual analytical formula for the solution, but we try to understand, broadly speaking, how the system behaves. Do the solutions converge towards a steady state? Do the solutions blow up? Is there multiple steady states in the system? And how to represent that data in the best possible way? So today we're going to talk about something called phase diagrams. They are essentially cartoon descriptions of a dynamical system. Um, and um, the simplest case for this kind of thing is a one-dimensional case. So first, let's talk about the one-dimensional case. We're going to go back to uh, having a single variable over time. So um, concentration, population, uh, you name it, only one variable. variable of time, and you have an equation y prime of t equals f of y of t. Sometimes we'll get rid of the, of the t and we just leave it as y prime equals f of y. Okay, we talked about these examples. Uh, for example, exponential growth is an, is an example of this thing. You got single variable exponential growth. Uh, in general, <coughs> Instead of trying to instead of trying to find out the exact solution analytically, we're going to have some kind of picture of how the solution behaves qualitatively. How do you do this? Well, suppose that we plot on the y-axis, we're going to plot y prime, the rate of change, and on the x-axis, we're going to plot y, the state. Okay. So this equation tells you how fast the particle is moving, or the or the population is growing, or whatever, as a function of the state. So let's plot the function f of y in this graph. Suppose that the function looks like this. For example, it could be anything. Okay. So, given the state of the of the of the system, you can find out how fast it's growing. For example, if this is one, and you're here, then the rate of growth is, is one. Okay. In particular, if you start over here, let's say. If this is y of 0, you think that the population or the variable, let's think about it as population of rabbits, OK? Do you think the population of rabbits is increasing or decreasing at that time? Which one? Increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Why is that? Mm. So actually, you don't want to look at the slope of this function. You want to look at the value of the function. You see, let's say that y is this value, then f of y is this point right here. That point is the rate of change. It's not a derivative f prime. It's a, it's a function f. You know, y prime is equal to f of y, right? f of y is positive. The function f itself is positive. So the, the, the population is increasing. OK? For example, what if I started right here, right at this point here? The population is increasing or decreasing? It's, it's stable. It's not moving. So this thing is what we call a steady state. OK? Not only that, but if you start with a population, let's say, over here, then uh, what do you think? Is the population increasing or decreasing at that time? It's decreasing because f is negative, right? So if you ever start away from this point, say over here or over here, you're going to converge towards that point. Because of that, we call this a stable steady state. OK? Now, let's think about this point over here. I'm going to draw it with an empty ball. If you start right here, you're going to stay there. It's a steady state, too. But suppose that you started somewhere around that point, for example, here. The population is growing or decreasing? Growing. It's growing. OK? And if you started, say, over here, population starts here, population is growing or decreasing? It's decreasing because f is negative, right? 
So this point is unstable because you see if you start anywhere around but not right there, you're going to blow away, away from the point. So this point is an unstable steady state. OK. And this point here is also stable, right? OK, awesome. Uh, let me give you an example of this. We've already talked about similar examples in the past, but let me just give you an example. So y prime is equal to 10y multiplied by 5 minus y. OK, so again, y, I'm not writing a t, but it's a function of time, y prime of time. And this is y of t, and this is y of t. So you plot this thing, this function, y versus y prime. And you see that that function in there is a, essentially a parabola, right? It's pointing downwards. It becomes 0 at 5 and at 0. OK, this thing is a function of y. <clears throat> so what do you think? This point here is a stable steady state or unstable? What do you think? I think it's stable. Stable. Why is that? Because it's um, going from increasing to decreasing. OK, so, so solutions that start over here go towards the point. Solution that starts over here go towards the point, too. Stable steady state. What about this one over here? Hey, Natalie. Stable. Stable. Why is that? Because the other side of it is still going to the point. Actually, no, because if you start it over here, the solution oh, is going to grow. Yes. Oh, so is it a semi stable thing below? Percent? Well, actually, no, because if you start it in oh, here, so population is decreasing, right? I get it. Okay. It's unstable. It's unstable, OK? In fact, because we're thinking usually about populations and uh, concentrations. Those things only make sense for positive y. You know, negative y doesn't really exist in this context because it's not biologically realistic. So we kind of ignore this part. A lot of the times when we're looking at biological models, we only care about this side of the, of the equation. And zero is important too, right? You could have zero concentration. Okay? So this system has two steady states. One is stable, the other one is unstable. All right. <clears throat> yes. Uh, really, the stable or unstable has to do with where f is positive and f is negative, not necessarily the slope. However, it's very good you bring that point because you see the, the stable points are points where the function does like this, right? And the unstable points are the points where the function does like this. So by looking at the slope of f, you can tell if the point is stable or unstable. OK, and you were, you, you were hinting at that a moment ago. So what do you think? What, what would be this, the slope of a point that is unstable? Positive. Positive. And if the point has a, a negative slope, then it's stable, right? OK, let's write it down. Okay, so notice that if y0 is a steady state, i.e., what does it mean for i0 to be a steady state mathematically speaking? It means that you're not moving. The population is not growing or decreasing at that point. Uh, and not necessarily converges. It could be an unstable steady state. Okay? Um, so steady state by itself means that f of y0 is equal to 0, right? OK. Now given a steady state, f of y0 is equal to 0, then 
if f prime at the point y0 is bigger than 0, we know that the point y0 is unstable. And if f prime of y0 is less than 0, we know that y0 is stable. So there you go. This is a lot of information. You know, you would think, and I told you in the beginning of the, of the, of the class, that solving ODEs is very hard. It's very difficult. And if you're able to you know, solve it in a, in, a, in a real life scenario, you should be very proud. Okay? But this is not actually solving it. We're, I'm not actually telling you this is the solution y of t over time. I'm not giving you a formula for y of t. I'm just telling you the qualitative behavior of the system. You, you, you notice the difference, right? So I cannot tell you y of t, you know, the solution of y of t, I don't know. I, just tell, I, I can just tell you that it converges towards a point or converges away from the point. But you know what? That's as much as we can tell about biological systems anyways. Because we don't know the parameter values, right? If you don't know the parameter values, it almost doesn't matter. You know, you, you don't, you're not going to know where the particle is at time 10 anyways. So who cares, right? Yeah. All right, so um, <clears throat> uh, do you have any other questions about this uh, one-dimensional case? Because you see, this, this, really solves, this really solves the behavior. This really describes the behavior of pretty much any one-dimensional dynamical system. Any equation of the form so an equation of the form y prime equals f of y in the 1D case, OK? What do we know? Well, the solutions are increasing or decreasing. They cannot really go up and, uh, up and down over time. They're either always increasing or decreasing. Each solution. is either monotonically decreasing or increasing. Let me just mention this in this in this particular case. If you have Let's, let's, do a, let's do a plot of this function over time, just so it's, just so it's more clear. This is the point 5, OK? We said that 5 is a st stable steady state. So they, let's say that we started out at 3 with y of 0. Say that y of 0 starts here. What do you think is going to happen with the solution over time? It converges to 5. So the solution over time looks like this. This is the graph we're used to plotting. You know, this, this kind of graph, which we're calling the, uh, the uh, face portrait, or the face um, diagram, you know, it's a, new, it's a new diagram for us. We haven't done it before. But this thing we're used to doing, you know, you just find a solution of the equation and, and plot it. We actually did it the first time. Other solutions look like this, for example, or like this. But you can see all this stuff. You can see all this information from this graph here. From the portrait. Yes. Uh, when would it start to? Oh, never mind. Because it's always going to be going away from zero, right? So. It always goes away from zero unless you start at zero. If you start at zero, you stay at zero. In other words, this is also a solution. That would be a solution too. To stay at zero, okay? And of course, you stay at 5 is also a solution. That's the definition of steady state. If you, stay, if you start there, you stay there, right? OK? Awesome. So as you can see, solutions are either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. And they tend to converge towards steady states. Steady states or 
Is it possible that a solution does not converge towards a steady state? What do you think? Could go up to infinity, that's right. For example, suppose that this was the shape of the function f, OK? And you start over here. Then the solution starts increasing. And it never stops increasing. It just blows up, OK? Um, right. Or blow up to infinity. Now, let me ask you guys. Do you think that in one dimension you could have a solution over time that looks like this? Over time, mind you. This is not a phase diagram. Is it possible to have a solution over time that looks like this, oscillatory? We already talked about linear systems, and we showed that they can have oscillations. What about here? Okay, so can you have that in one dimensional systems? Sorry? Good question. See, what happens with a spring? A spring is a one dimensional system, but the spring satisfies a differential equation with two derivatives. Okay, it's, it involves the second derivative, you know, uh, y prime prime. The type of equation we're looking at, this equation, only has one derivative. Okay? So there's no acceleration involved. Biological systems don't tend to include acceleration. You know, we're talking about population of, of, uh, of animals and whatnot. So the secondary but it just doesn't show up so much. In the case of this dynamical system, do you think that there can be oscillations over time, going up and down? Do you mean that because we're taking a derivative of f and f is a derivative of y, then that's the second derivative? Okay, that's a good point. It's not exactly that's not exactly right. It's a, it, that's why this this writing in terms of derivatives of f can be a little bit confusing. I'm never actually derivating y of t twice. Here you have the derivative of y, and here I have the derivative of f, but it's not the same as taking the derivative of y. So, and anyway, even if you look at a derivative, that doesn't mean we're looking where the the, the second derivative is involved in the ODE, right? Okay, so back to the question. Yes or no, can you have oscillations over time in one dimensional systems of this form? Could be an exponential growth. Exponential growth, but that's not oscillatory over time. It just keeps growing. Yeah, it's Sorry? Okay, you could define the function y prime equals sine of y. Okay, so as a, the, the phase diagram looks like this, right? Which seems like it's oscillating. But how do the individual solutions look like over time? Exactly, there's a whole bunch of different steady states, you know. <coughs> And the solutions themselves are not oscillatory. This looks oscillatory, but the solutions are not oscillatory. OK? So can you have oscillations in one of these systems? No. <laughs> no oscillations. OK, actually, you can tell that there's no oscillations from this property right here. Each solution is either monotonically decreasing or decreasing. If they're monotonically increasing or decreasing, you cannot have oscillations, right? OK, great. But there's a lot of caveats, OK? And then you guys brought up a lot of caveats. For example, this is assuming that the, the only one derivative is involved. If we had a second derivative here, then uh, I would be very much on your side that you can have, for example, spring behavior when you can have uh, oscillations, OK? Question. Um, is that because for a one-dimensional uh, case, you're looking only at one subject, whereas if you were in a biological system, that's absolutely a way to put it, yes. If you, wanted to, if you had two variables, for example, wolves and rabbits, 
then you could very much have oscillations in the population over time. Okay? But if you only have rabbits, and they're just by themselves, you cannot have rabbit populations that oscillate over time, up and down. Okay? <coughs> All right. Great. Well, now let's go over to uh, higher dimensional systems. So higher dimensional phase diagrams. I, I was also calling them phase portraits. That would be another way. It's like a, taking a portrait of a person or a diagram. Diagram is like a cartoon of the system. Okay? So let's write this down just like before. You know, for example, uh, y is a variable like y1, y2 over time. So when we write down a two-dimensional system, we write an equation for y1, and we write an equation for y2. The rate of growth of y1 depends on y1 and y2. The rate of growth of y2 depends on y1 and y2. We simplify this by saying y prime, y1 prime equals f1 of y, y2 prime of y2 prime is equal to f2 of y, simply because y1 and y2 is just a vector y. And then we simplify this further by using the notation y prime equals f of y. The, dif the difference now is that y is a vector and not a scalar. But as you see, the notation is the same. OK? So same notation, but now we're talking about vectors. And f is a vector field. f is a, ve is a vector field that takes vectors and spits out vectors. So for example, In the 2D case, we can talk about a vector field f, and we can plot the vector field f, for example, like this. OK? So the vector field takes any vector y and uh, outputs the velocity of the particle, y prime. And the solution of the system is going to be a particle or you know, a trajectory over time that follows the flow, something like this. OK? So the way that I like to think about this is the following. You think about these vectors as describing the flow of a river. You know, you have a river with arrows pointing in a, in a particular direction at every point. And you take a piece of paper and you let it floating on the water. You just put it in the water and let it go. So at any given time, the piece of paper is moving with the speed given by the flow. And the question is, what is the trajectory over time of the piece of paper? Okay. So the system is described by the vector field, and you're trying to find this kind of solution. There you go. So um, <clears throat> one more thing. Uh, usually, one can add an initial condition. y of 0 is equal to, I don't know, let's say a. So you specify at the time 0 where the particle is. So this point here will be a. Why is it important to specify the initial condition? If you had a different initial condition, would you get as the same solution? No, right? You have a different solution. OK? So this equation, together with this initial condition, 
is supposed to restrict the problem to a single solution, to a single trajectory. <coughs> All right. I think we have a little bit of time. I can tell you about something called null clients. Let's see. Have you guys heard of null clients before? <clears throat> null clients work um, pretty much only in the two-dimensional case. It's a it's a way of it's a, an ana a possible analysis you can do on a one-dimensional system, on a two-dimensional system. Oh, sorry, this is x. OK, actually, yeah, I should say something else. I, we, we haven't really come up with examples of this, but a, a phase diagram the topic of today's today's lecture, phase diagram. We already saw it in one-dimensional systems, right? We know what a phase diagram is. It's essentially a cartoon description of the system. You know, in, in one in one graph, you can see what the solutions look like, what they do. You know, and in one D, it looks like a like a little graph, y versus y y prime. Okay. In two D, we cannot do that plot anymore because you know it doesn't work. We have too many variables to plot out to plot on the plane. But what we can do is we can do something like this. We can, we can make a 2D description of the behavior of the system. For example, this is, do we like, like this? OK, you plot your two variables, y1 and y2. And then what do you do? You do some kind of cartoon description of the system. For example, uh, it's possible that there's a steady state here, and there's another, let's say, another steady state here. And this one is stable, so we wrote it with a, with a solid ball. And this one is unstable, so we draw it with, with an empty ball. And it could be that the solutions around this point are oscillatory. For example, it could be like, they look like this. So you draw a little, little spiral there to indicate that the solutions are oscillatory. Of course, it's not just this one. If you start over here, you can, you can see that it also oscillates in, right? So, uh, and for example, it could be that the solutions here do like this. It's called the saddle point, OK? Um, we learn more about these different solutions or, uh, in the next few lectures. But I just want to point out that a phase diagram is some kind of cartoon description of the system. Your objective, when you're trying to analyze one of these systems, is to figure out the qualitative behavior. You're trying to figure out more or less what the solutions do over time. For example, just knowing that the solutions are oscillatory and approach this point is valuable information. We're not asking too much. We're not asking that you figure out exactly what the solutions look like over time. You, like write, to write a formula y of t, that will be too much. That's too hard. But we can expect you guys to, to figure out the general behavior this kind of cartoon description of the system, OK? And we're going to spend the next few lectures talking about tools that can help you figure out this cartoon description of the system, OK? The first, uh, of course, for 1D, we already know how it works. There's no problem. For 2D systems, we still need to learn tools for analysis. And a useful tool for analyzing 2D systems is this idea of null claims. So what do you do with a null claim? Or what is a null claim? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Okay, so the x null line is a set of points such that f of x comma y is equal to zero. Basically, the graph of the function f of x y is equal to 0. So I don't know how it looks like. Let's say that it looks like this. So 
let's say you plot the points x and y such that f of xy is equal to 0. What do you think that means in terms of the ODE? If I plotted the vectors, you know, if I plotted that vector field in this plane, what do you think the vector field will look like on this blue line? Well, remember, this, the, the vector field is given by these two components, f of, f of xy and g of xy. And if this component is equal to 0, then what does the vector look like? Flat vertical, that's right. Okay? You know, the, if I evaluate the, the function, the, the vector field at any point is going to give me some, some vectors, you know, pointing some, some way. But over here, I know for sure that the vectors are, are going up or down. Let's say something like this. Let's say over here they might be pointing up. And over here they might be pointing down. I don't know which way they're pointing, but I know that they're vertical. And I know that because the x component is 0. Okay? What about the y null kind? Can anybody guess what the y null kind is? Okay, so the y null kind is a set of points such that g of xy is equal to 0. And I'm going to do the same thing as, as we did before, like this. And at those points, the vector field is what? Vertical, diagonal, horizontal, right? Horizontal. OK. Once again, I don't know whether it's pointing that way or that way, but I know they're horizontal. So let's, let's, let me draw it like this, going this way, going that way. OK, now what do you think happens with the points that are intersecting the two null clients? What is it? Exactly, they're just steady states. Why are they the steady states? Um, Natalie, why do you think those are the steady states? OK, so the points on the blue line have x component equal to 0. The points on the green, green line have y component equal to 0. So if they're in both lines, both components have to be equal to 0. So then they're steady states. OK, so these are all steady states. I don't know if they're stable or unstable. OK, moreover, well, actually, let me just write this down. So notice. the intersections of the null planes are the steady states. OK, great. You know what? Let me give you an example so that you see what I mean by a null claim more precisely. So the example is a system x prime equals y squared minus x, y prime equals x minus y. Notice that I'm using x and y as the names of my variables. Before, we were using y1, y2, y3. Either way is fine. You know, you can use either of the two ways. We could talk about y1 and y2. It's just maybe a little bit easier with x and y notationally, but it's the same thing. All right, so um, what is the x null kind? Um, what is the x null kind? Uh, x equals y squared. That's right. So y squared minus x is equal to 0 
which is the same as saying that x equal to y squared. And how does that look like on the plane? It's like a parabola, yeah. but it's not a normal parabola, right? It's that's right. Okay, this is x equals y squared. What about the um, y null plane? Do you want to try? That's right. So x minus y equal to 0, so y equals x. And that's just a straight line, right? All right. Close enough. Now, we know that the vectors over here are, you know, the vectors of the x-axis, of the, of the x null plane, are vertical, right? So I'm going to draw vertical lines in here. You know what, let me plot it just a little bit, little bit nicer. Like this. Okay. Okay. Now, these vectors are vertical, and I still don't know if they're pointing up or down. These vectors are horizontal, but I still don't know which way they're pointing. Okay? So now, how do we figure out if, if they're pointing one way or another? What do you think? Exactly. We value them as, te as test points. Okay? Um, let's see. Um, okay, so <clears throat> so find out orientation using Actually, not, not orientation, but direction. Using test points. What would be a very easy point to evaluate these things at? For example, is there any point in here that's like really easy to evaluate? That's right, the point negative one, negative one. So let's evaluate it here to see if these arrows are pointing that way or this way, okay? Okay, so we're going to evaluate the vector field. The vector field is given by x prime and y prime. x prime, as you know, is equal to y prime, sorry, y squared minus x, but y is minus 1 and x is minus 1. So what is that? What is that? Two. Two. Bigger than zero, right? Okay, so that means that over here it's positive. Okay, now let's think about it. Can, can these vectors ever point that way? You know, suppose that I start walking along the green line. Can I ever see them flipping from one side to the other? For example, could I ever see this? Why not? Because you're always going to be having negative values down there, so the x components will always be positive. Okay, you can see that from the equation. 
But let's just look at the graph, at the, at the null class right here. I would, I would like to tell you a very simple argument why you can never actually go from positive to, ne to, to from pointing that way to pointing that way in this situation. And that's the following. If it ever went from, pos from, from pointing that way to pointing that way, then there would be some point over here where the vector is exactly equal to zero, right? And that would be a steady state. And remember, those are intersections with the null kinds, right? The two null kinds. So there would have to be a blue line in between. You see? What that means is that they can only flip direction when you're intersecting with the other null claim, with the blue null claim. And that makes things a lot, a lot easier, because that means you know that all these points, all these vectors are pointing that way. After you intersect the blue line, they start pointing this way. And after you intersect the blue line again, they point that way. So it's easy, right? Yes, sir? Is it possible that <coughs> even if it passes the blue line, it's still going the same direction? Well, it is, it is one thing that is possible is, for example, that that's a, good, that's a very good question. Um, it's possible that it touches the blue line without actually crossing it. If it touches the blue line without crossing it, then it might go from positive to positive. OK? But if it actually crosses it, it would be very, very uh, rare, very pathological for it to, to move the other way. OK? And these cases, I, I, I was thinking about it th this morning. I think that you can dream up a case where, where it doesn't change the signs, but then you would have some very strange singularity at those points in the middle. So any of these examples we're going to look at in class, and pretty much any re reasonable biological example, you can pretty much assume, or you can assume, that the, the, the directions change sign when you cross the null plane. OK, I think it's a safe assumption to make. <clears throat> so. Let's look at a point involving the blue null claim. For example, a point over here. This point is what? Let's say the point one negative one. Negative one. That's right. Okay. So what is the what is the value of? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess I didn't plot. Uh, I didn't show you what happens with y prime at this point. But uh, I think you should be able to tell from the fact that we're talking about the null line what happens at that point. y prime is equal to um, x minus y, which is minus 1 minus minus 1 is equal to 0. Is that a surprise that it's equal to 0? It's not a surprise because we are on the y null line, right? That's the whole point. It's a set of points where the, the y component is equal to 0. Now let's look at a different component, uh, a different point, the point uh, 1 minus 1. OK, what is x prime at that point? <clears throat> it's. Uh, minus 1 squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Is that a surprise? No, because we're in the blue null plane. That's the x null plane. Uh, what about y prime? y prime is equal to x minus y, which is equal to 1 minus minus 1 which is 2, which is bigger than 0. So is this vector pointing up or down? Pointing up, that's right. OK. And after it crosses the null line, it starts pointing down. And after it crosses the null line again, it starts pointing up again. Let me tell you another way to see this. Um, <clears throat> the uh, let's see. So the 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 y null line is this line right here. Y is equal to x. On one side of the points, for example, on this side, you know, let, let, let's say that this line kind of splits the plane into two. There's this side of the line and this side of the line. Okay. On this side of the line, y minus x, sorry, x minus y 
has one value. It, um, x minus y is uh, uh, negative. Okay? On this side of the plane, all these points are positive. The, 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 the function x minus y has only positive values. So the only way that you can go from positive to negative is by, cross, by actually crossing this line. So uh, the only way that you can stay positive, you know, and not actually change sign when you touch the null kind, is if you stay on the same line of the, the same side of the blue line. If you actually cross the blue line, then you're guaranteed to change the, the direction of the arrows. I don't know if this makes sense. But, uh, okay. All right. <coughs> okay. Now we have plotted the null line, and then the question is, what what do we know about the system after plotting the null lines? Okay, we know a couple of things. What can you guys tell me? What, what is the first thing we can tell from knowing the null lines in the system? There's two steady states, that's right. Two steady states, one here and one here. Okay, can we tell anything about their stability of these two steady states? This one looks like it's stable, that's right. You can see that the arrows are pointing, you know, these arrows are pointing that, this way, these arrows are pointing this way, right? The arrows seem to be pointing this, towards this point. In fact, for example, if you, you know, if you're here, you're pointing that way. If you're here, then you're pointing that way. If you were standing in here, you're actually going to point this way. It's like a mix of both, right? If you start, you know, these points, these points go up, these points go to the side. If you're here, you're going to go this way. Again, it's like a mix of both. You know? And so by, by looking at the uh, vectors around this neighborhood, by looking at this, this information you have, you have a hunch that this, is, this, this point is stable. Okay? Now, this is all just a hunch. You cannot, I don't think you can actually prove that you know, the stability of the system just by looking at these, at these vectors. Or maybe, I don't know if you can, but for example, over here, it's a little harder, right? You know, the vectors are pointing this way, then they're pointing that way, so it's not clear. But, but I think you can also tell us a hunch that this point is unstable. Because you see, these vectors are pointing the way, these vectors are pointing away. So it seems like the solutions of this system are... It seems like it's something like this. And it seems like this point is stable. Okay, but mind you, this is all just uh, hunches. You know, you, we still need to do a more careful analysis. But the fact that you can find out this information or have a good hunch about this information is still very useful. Okay, so so we can conclude from the null kind analysis. shows that there are two steady states <coughs> and suggests that one is stable and the other is unstable. So there you go. Do you guys have any questions about null lines? Or phase diagrams? Phase diagrams in 1D we got basically down. That's pretty much it. Phase diagrams in 2D and higher are more complicated. We're going to spend the next few lectures talking about how to figure out the phase diagram of a 2D system. OK, great. So we'll finish here. Yes, sir? Did I talk about what? What is a Yeah. The null plane is a. This is the definition of a null line. The null line is a set of points satisfying that f of x, y is equal to 0. Right, I get that part, but like, actually, like an actual representation of what does that represent? Like? Is it just 
just show anything, like in the middle, or like in the bottom situation? You mean biologically? That's, that's a good question, but I, I, don't, I can't think of a, like a biological meaning for them. It's uh, basically, it's a set of, if you're thinking about a system with rabbits and sheep, it's a set of possible populations where the sheep are not growing, but the rabbits are, for example. You can think about it that way, I guess. But it's mostly a, a technical tool, you know, to help you understand the system better. 